I'm Scott Weatherly. Welcome to 20th Century Geek. Hello listeners and welcome back. And are you ready to rumble? It's round two on our Monster Mash versus Battle. Last time we had Werewolves of 1981, American Werewolf in London versus The Howling. And now we're taking on Zombies. And uh, to talk about my own monster... I'm joined by Mike again. Hey, there we are. That was a good segue. It was. I, was quite yeah, I like that. that. I like that. That's good. That. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, last time it was quite a decisive victory, I would say, for American Warrior from London. It, it, yeah. It, it took to the ring and win quite handily. Mm. Well, I think, I think it was a, it was a, 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 I think it was a one-sided contest anyway from the <laughs> yeah. beginning, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, American Warrior from London will go down as one of the greatest non-British British films of all time. I think so. It know? definitely um, but now we're, we're jumping ahead a couple of years. We are. To 1985. Okay. And uh, as is always the case, two films about pretty much the same thing. He was going to say two films one envelope then, wasn't it? Was. It was. Con- yeah. Completely different podcast. Yeah, different podcast. Two films come out at the same time yeah. about the same thing. And this well, year... Well, it is. I had to think about this. Pretty, right? pretty, pretty much the same. Yeah, thing. pretty much. Yeah. The same. These are this is these are two, and I'm not going to say zombie films because I don't really see them as zombies. They are reanimated dead zombie films i i think i think that you're a little bit sort of like you know it's it's a kind of difference between people landing on the moon and people not landing on the moon yeah that's another different that's another, that's another podcast. Not conspiracy however zombies. however it's like it's that it's that gray area you know it is do it, you it's, consider it's, it's return of the living dead mm-hmm. with living dead in the title a zombie movie i think it is yeah oh yeah oh yeah it is it's but they're not shambling zombies, are they? So that's no, we'll get on to that in a minute. Okay. So the right, first okay. one you write though is we're talking about re- the was it the uh, zombie horror comedy? Yeah. That is Zomcoms. Uh, Zomcom, Zomcom one, which is Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. And that is going up against the other uh, horror Zomcom of the same year, which is H.P. Lovecraft's Reanimator. Yeah. And so. What it is, we'll take them in turns, what we think about the films, and mm-hmm. then we'll get the scores together and we'll talk about things. And we've, we've been to the Twitter as well. There was, a, there, was a, there was a Twitter poll at the weekend, just gone, and um, so the world has cast its vote. Okay. Uh, again, we had over 100 votes, so it's just quite a solid vote, Aye. but we'll get to that later. So, cool. Um, let's start with Return of the Living Dead. So, okay, right. Let's start with your thoughts on Return of the Living Dead. How did you get come across it? Well, the odd thing about Return of the Living Dead is when I watched it, I kind of thought to myself about a conversation we had last podcast, uh-huh. which is what films, sequels, are better than the originals? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say Return of the Living Dead 2 is better than Return of the Living Dead. I've never seen Return of the Living Dead 2. Have you not? I haven't. Oh, gosh. I've seen okay. both of these franchises, or both of these series. Hmm. I haven't seen the second sequel. I've seen both the third ones. Oh, okay. So I've seen Return of the Living Dead 3, and I've seen Beyond Reanimator. But you haven't seen Bride. I haven't seen Bride. Oh, I I, I'll lend you Bride. Um, I've got Bride upstairs. And I haven't seen Return of the Living Dead 2. So, oh, it's a wonderful... So, uh, mm. well, the, the Return of the Living Dead 2 is great. It's absolutely great. Mm. And, and uh, yeah, so that struck me, first of all, is that there's a reason I've watched Return of the Living Dead 2 more. Many times, um, but yeah, it's it's sort of like it did throw me back to nineteen eighties shitty acted movies. You know? I gotta say, yeah, the acting stands out in Return of the Living Dead. What 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 is that character that gets her boobs out and you can see her fanny? She gets, in she it gets everything. Yeah, out. she does. Uh, Le- Leanna Quigley, I think her name is something like that. I, in I, real life. Yeah, that's a real name. Oh, okay. She's, in the film, she's, she's still called, alive, or yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah still yeah. hot. Oh, relatively, yeah. She's quite well. In the film, though, I how think did she get that job? On well, what talents do you reckon? Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that you have multiple talents, both left and right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the film, I think she's called Trash. <laughs> right, that's an uh, applicable name. Yeah, and she does have a, a strange fetish about being eaten alive by old men. Yeah, and she gets eaten alive by old zombies. Yeah. So, so it's quite ironic that there's yeah. some humour in that. It is a little bit of well, um, I've got my finger caught in my flip. There we are. There we are. But you you strike on a thing. There's, there were two things with that group of punks. They are punks, mm. basically. They're supposed to be mid '80s punks. Yeah. And by that point, I thought punk had sort of died a bit. I yeah. Well, wrong. they are. They're '80s '80s yeah, punks. Yeah, yeah. That's why '80s punks were. However, 
Mm. So the one that works, and we'll actually do a quick plot summary in a minute, but the one that works in the medical facility, he's one of those he's, a, he's more of a jock. He's, yeah, he seems to be more of a jock. And then his girlfriend, which also hangs out with him. It's not a punk at she's, all. She's from like a John Hughes film. Yeah. Like a complete yeah, she's mismatch a nice, of She's characters. a nice girl who's never had sex. Mm. There are moments when she is talking with the punks. The one's called Suicide. Yeah. Uh, with the chains on and stuff. I, I, I do like the name, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, and he's serious, like, ser- no one takes me seriously. This is a statement. And she's like, well, I'm going to go off and talk to so-and-so. And I'm yeah. just like, I don't, why would you hang out with her? I'm going to go or vice versa. I'm going to go and talk to Megadeth. You stay there, <laughs> Suicide, and talk to Trash. Yeah. By the way, I didn't get your name. What's your name? Oh, oh my name is Lisa. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is. Her name is Lisa. The rest of them are Megadeth, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Um, so yes, I think the the character combinations are a little off. Yeah, yeah, quite um, terrible. However, there's something else to go back to another previous podcast that you said about his films. The thing that's always caught me most, and I didn't see mm. this film until relatively recently, so probably in the last four years, I, I first saw this film. Again, I saw three a long time ago. Has been the cover. Oh yes, yes. So the yeah, yeah, yeah. the the, the uh, drawn or painted cover of the two punk zombies stood over the grave. Yes, has yeah, been, good cover. It is it's fantastic, mm. and I've known that cover since I was a kid, and grown mm. up in that, and it's always stood out. And I'm just amazed I haven't actually ever I hadn't seen the film till relatively recently. No, you masturbated to the cover a few times, but you never actually watched the mm. film. It was. It was Return of the Jizzing Dead. Jizzing Dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um. So it is, it's been around. It's, it's, At my it's, age, it is raising the living dead. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. They do need chemical help. I do. Um, so, yeah, let's just do a quick plot summary then. You, I'll let you, you on, give us a pl- quick plot summary of Return of the Living Dead. Um, it's basically, was, first of all, it's a, the, the entire film is a homage to Night of the Living Dead. Yes. There's, there's no two ways about that. No, it, no, it, totally. it is completely a nod in the direction of Night of the Living Dead. Um, a, a medical supplies warehouse. Um, that holds dead bodies, uh, skeletons, pharmaceuticals, half dogs for veterinarian services, which is really cool. Um, they they have there was an outbreak, uh, which Night of the Living Dead was based on, mm-hmm. and everyone thinks Night of the Living Dead is fake, but it's actually a true based on true story. And this medical facility, for some unknown reason, has these military Cler- clerical mishap. In the military is basically it. Yeah, yeah, of of highly toxic yeah. secret barrels containing these creatures. Um, and then they said, do you want to go down into the basement and have a look? So, yeah, all right. And they go down to the basement, and would you believe it, some of the ooze comes mm. out and sprays them in the face. And they become Ninja Turtles. They become <laughs> they become Rocksteady and Bebop. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and then they become infected. And, of course, the cadaver they have inside the locker uh, becomes infected as well, who is wearing, for some reason, a leather thong. Red leather thong, yeah. which is a bit weird. Um, and then they manage to kill him by putting a, an axe in his head. Well, no, it doesn't kill nice him. Pick. It doesn't kill him. The well, body no. still moves. The body still he's moves. He's technically dead. Yeah. Um, so the brain brain doesn't work. Hit them, the brain doesn't work, mm. you know. Then they take it to the uh, crematorium, and the crematorium guy says, don't worry, what I'll do is I will burn this body. And they burn it, and then, of course, all the ooze and smoke from the from the body goes out into the graveyard, and then the graveyard, then all the dead miraculously come alive, all looking like they've only just been put in the grave. You know, S- Some, not all. Though, cause I think the makeup was pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Uh, and then chaos ensues, mm. you know, and that's basically it. It's, it becomes a siege it's, film. Yeah, that, it is a siege it? film, yeah, yeah. With, this, a, with a really weird ending. Well, this is the thing. Both these films have a rather downbeat ending, mm. uh, which I quite like Yeah. in a weird way. Um, I there's, There are several things in Return of the Living Dead that I think that really stand out for me. Is, the, obviously, I, obviously, Trash's boobs. Trash's boobs, in the 3D version. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um there's some really interesting like sardonic humour you know peppered throughout Return of the Living Dead um, that's quite clever so like for example in the medical office it feels like a real office like you know it's a bit of a warehouse hmm. but the boss is called Bert the guy yes. who runs the place they have to call him back in and he's the one who knows the crem- crematorium guy but when um, Frank the older guy is showing um, 
I forget the younger guy's this, whatever the younger guy's name is. They're showing him around and he takes him back in the office and stuff. On the back wall is what looks like an eye chart. Yeah. So it starts with like big letters and they get narrower and they get smaller. I'd never read it until just this time. I was just flicking through some of the scenes and I, accent, I, I just paused it on that moment and it says, Bert is a slave driver and it goes out and as you get down, it's basically them ripping on the boss and it was like, that's a nice little touch. Oh, that was and there's, nice. st- there's still stuff like that in the background. I never noticed that. No, exactly. No, so no, little, no. little Easter eggs, like little things in the background. Are really I was too cool. busy. I was too busy watching Trash's boobs. Mm. You know. But uh, yeah, so I, I think this has got some really clever little moments in like that. Mm. Um, but the performances do let it down. I would is, say this tenfold. Is a, this yeah. is this is a comedy. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. It is, isn't it? It is. It well, is yeah. a. It is. It's. It doesn't pretend not to be. No, I don't think. But I, you know, as you will know, everything. The essence of the comedy is like good timing. Yeah, which and sometimes falls flat on his face. It it does, and mm. I think some of the points. And again, you know, Linnea Quigley's when she when she delivers that moment of saying, "Do you ever think about dying? Do you ever think about the worst ways of being killed?" Mm. Her performance comes across like. I know she's supposed to be a little weird, but it comes across really forced, and so I just sort of. There are a couple of moments where it just feels acted rather than natural. Yeah, it, it it's it's. Um, I think it's 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 a low budget. Yeah. Production. It is. And uh, and you can tell that by the actors, yeah. you know, and the way it's it's acted out. But I mean, you know, it. But it's still. But that I, I was saying to I was saying to Ruth last night, you know, it's the when we were watching Reanimator actually, is that the trashiness of these low budget horrors is what makes these horrors good, yes. and that's what makes Return of the Living Dead good. It is, is that it's low, it is low budget nonsense. Oh God, yeah, don't get you me know. wrong. I'm not trying to hold this up to Oscar nom no, performance. No, of course not. It's just that in, every now and then, some of the performances are even below. Oh, the below par. Status. Yeah, yeah. However, there is one performance, there is one character in this film that I really enjoy, mm-hmm. and that is the guy that runs the crematorium. Oh, he's great, isn't he? Yeah. D- doesn't he look like he was born to run a crematorium, though? I like the fact that, like, again, he's one of those characters in that little crematorium or the mortuary mm. has got some really interesting little Easter eggs in it again. And I had to double check this, so I actually Googled some of this. So he is supposed to be a Nazi. With that, I can see that. So he's an Aryan. This is why he carries a Luger around with his pocket, right? Which is, okay. which is weird. But then when you look in the background, there are there are literally there are Hitler Youth posters all around the place, all, all, all on the wall and stuff. And he's listening to German Reich Third Reich music. I thought he was the guy out of the Burbs. That one. Oh, stage. look at the short yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Looks a bit like. Looks him. a bit like him, but it, I don't think it's the same person. But yeah, no, no. Okay, I didn't realize that. But I mean, yeah, yeah I can see, I can see it. Yeah, you know. Um, so I think his performance is actually really good. I find him really entertaining. I, I like the bit when the uh, the arm comes out of the bag and grabs him by the leg and then rips his trouser leg off. Yeah. And you're like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? That yeah. doesn't even happen on my wedding night. What are you talking about? You yeah. know? <laughs> it's his reaction to it all. Because yeah. at first they're like, oh, they're, like, they're rabid weasels. Mm. And he's like, well, just, just go drown them then or something. And he's like, oh, we, we can't really do that. So he's like, oh, look, I'll take them like that and I'll shoot them. And there's like, oh, I can't really do that. He's very sort of like cool and collected about the whole thing and takes it in his stride. So when he actually shows him it's a dismembered body, he's like, oh, that's a bit fucked up, but all right, we'll burn it. Sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. He takes it quite in his stride, which suggests this guy's got a bit of a shady past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's, he's seen, Yeah, he's seen stuff. This yeah. guy's seen some like messed up stuff. So... Um, Put them in the oven? Yeah. Now? Um, but it's supposed to be comedy, so does this film make you laugh? Oh, that's an interesting question. Does it make me laugh? No. No. But I smile at it. Mm. You know. I agree with that. Um, I, I don't think it's, it's not laugh out loud. It's not Shaun of the Dead, you know. It's not that, no. that kind of like Shaun of the Dead. You can laugh out loud at certain mm. bits. and uh, But it's not rip-roaring, hold your sides, a splitting kind of funny type of film. I don't think it needs to be that. I think it's a very uh, kind of almost dark humour. It I is guess. a dark, dark yeah. humour. Um, but no, I don't think it, it's f- right, funny. Ha ha. No, it, it is still horrible. There are moments that make me laugh, like not laugh out loud, but you, mm. like you say, you laugh inside or you you sort of smile and stuff. So there are moments I find quite funny. Mm. 
like you say, the moment when he is introduced to the body parts and he is quite sort of like, all right, we'll deal with this. That whole scene um, is actually quite good. The bit where he pulls a luger on him mm. and he's like, oh, you shouldn't pull, you shouldn't walk up on a man with a gun. And he's like, well, why are you carrying a gun in a mortuary? Like, it's weird. I, I find it quite funny. Um, and there are scenes throughout it when they are doing stuff that's quite funny. But it's actually the zombies that make me laugh more. Okay. Um, and when they actually start coming out the ground and the things that some of the zombies do is actually like quite surprising because these aren't your dumb shambling zombies. No, they're not. No. Um, and it's sort of the rea- it's there, it's them, and then the reaction. So I quite you know, but the best bits is when the paramedics turn up and they get attacked, <laughs> and the and the the bus the the ra- the radio in the the ambulance goes. Mm. And he's like, you know, what's going on? What do you need more help? And the zombie goes, in, he's like, send more paramedics. <laughs> and he's like, oh, that's just that's messed up. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's actually quite clever. It's quite funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there there are elements of of fun. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a funny film. It is a funny mm. film, you know. But is it funny? Ha ha. Is it? Or is it just funny for the different reasons? You know, it's just that that underlying tone of humour. Is it a humorous film? I think it's a okay, humorous film. That's a better way of saying it. It's a humorous film. Do you mm. get enjoyment from the humour in it? Yeah. Then? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Do. Okay. So the flip side of that is the horror. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are your thoughts on the horror elements of the film? Um, it's... The thing about it is, is it, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a typical zombie movie. No. Uh, and yet it is a typical zombie movie. You it know? ends up being a typical zombie. Yeah, film. and you kind of like it. It kind of is a mixture between the two. I I think it's kind of like um, is there elements? Does the humour take away from the horror? I don't think it does really. Mm. I think I think it's uh, I think it's still a horror film. It's not horror scary, but it's horror genre. Certainly, you know, it fits into that niche of being a horror film. It's certainly not something you'd show your six year old. No, you know what I mean. It's not. It's not light-hearted entertainment by any stretch of imagination. There's some quite barbaric mm-hmm. things happen in there, you know, and some, and some of the effects are quite pretty cool as well, you know. I mean, the, the, when she goes down into the basement and the zombie comes out that was in the in the barrel, the tar tar man they call him, yeah, the tar, tar zombie, man, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. Brain, I like him. He's really good. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, yeah, you know, it's, you can you can see the effects. Yeah, are a bit ropey, but they, it works for the day. The, yeah, for it the works. Day. They're low budget. I mean, they were low budget for the day. The bit I enjoy about the horror of this film is twofold because I do think I think some of the special effects are actually really good. The makeup effects are actually pretty good for the most part. Like, I think the Tar Man actually looks yeah it looks quite pretty cool. good yeah and as like frank and the young guy are sort of deteriorating and stuff I mean, yeah they, 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 that's pretty good they sort of slowly throughout the film you realize they're getting grayer and then like, yeah, the bruising yeah. forms all oh, that's really good um and so when they are like smashing things up like there's a bit um when they're trying to bolt up a door and they pull in that half fi- the woman the half rotted female zombie mm. and they strap her to the counter like, she looks pretty good like she looks like a decomposing body yeah yeah she's really good yeah so the special effects are quite good, I think, from a horror point of view. Mm. There are two special effects I think that are used really well. Okay. That really freak me out. So there's one where Trash's boobs. No, I think they're real. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, I think they were paid for. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's a moment where they, they they break out to try and get to the police car. I think this is the moment they break out to try and get to the police car and they get up and there's a zombie eating on one of the paramedics brains or on one of the policemen's brains or something. Mm. And that zombie sort of like jumps up and it turns out it's either like, it's either like, um, been, and I'm going to be really careful with my language here. Mm. Either it's an amputee or he's been, he had some sort of disability. So he hasn't got like full legs and he hasn't got full arms. So like being Scottish. <sighs> no, no, not like being Scottish. Uh, so he's got stumps. He's got stumps for legs. He's got short arms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets up and he's able to run after him on those on little the stumps. stumps. Yeah. And forever, that sort of like because they've done him up like a little zombie. That freaks me out. But maybe it but is it really an amputee. It is. I think he is. Yeah, he is a real amputee. I look for it. I, did, and, you know, I mean, they're, they're but, nimble little shits. Yeah, yeah. They really are. You know, but it's I mean, a really good use of it. I think nimble little shits is a bit disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I meant. Yeah. Sorry. It's so a it's good a figure, use. It was a figure of speech, yeah. but I mean, it's a really good use. Of a, of a dis- disabled actor, well, yeah, and it looked, it's and a great little scene. I look at what that does. That creates this op- this opening, this opportunity for people of, of a disability because you know when you consider yeah, treadmill such dangerous ground. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is that when it comes to casting and stuff like mm. that, 
I mean, I've got a car something next week, and I know that someone has come in as it is, walks with a crutch. Yeah, yeah. You know, so when he comes around to my scale attraction, you know, I've got to think of the, the, the limitations of that actor has within mm. my attraction. Mm. It's not because you're, you know, non, non-disabled non friendly or anything like that. It's just the, the limitations of what you can offer within the storyline for that particular character mm. or that actor, et cetera, et cetera. It's just the face of it. So to be able to have something like an empathy perform mm. in some way, shape, or form in a film like that, I think, personally, mm. it's a great thing. Mm. And it gives an actor, just because you're an empathy doesn't mean you can't be an actor, you know? Yeah. It gives the actor something to do is oh, but that sounds really disrespectful again I, do you I, know what I mean I know what you mean I know what you're saying but at the same time at the same time it can be looked on and frowned upon that you are taking advantage of someone to be a scare to be a scare mm. you know it's like using dwarfs and scare mazes and stuff like that you know you look, you're using someone with an amputee to have their leg bitten off and ripped off in a film which has happened all, yeah, countless yeah, yeah. times well, you that's know, happened. with, with war, did war it, vets so. and stuff you know yeah yeah so I mean, it's it's got two flips of the of, of the thing there, really. Yeah. Two flips of the coin. But I th- I think it's great. I think yeah. it was, I think it was a great thing to use. As it well. is. It's a, good, yeah, it's a good little moment. Yeah. Scary as shit. It's a so, good little moment. It comes after him. And you met, think about this as well. Think about when, especially when you when you you're on my audition panel, you know, this week, mm. but um, next week rather. But um, think about it like this. All right, is that. You're sitting there on the audition panel, and someone comes in who's an empty, and they say, oh, I want to be in a zombie movie. And they says, Well, what can you do? Can you get about? And says, Well, I can do this. And he runs across the room. How fucking impressed would you be by that? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm writing like, you a scene. We can use that. We can write yeah, that yeah. scene. And I drew it. I'd write that oh, scene. Oh, yeah, in. yeah, totally. You know. And it works. It really is a great little scare. Oh, it's terribly scary, yeah. Because the thing is, it's obviously a practical effect. And that's the great thing about this film. It uses, because again, it's not, there is no CGI, so it's all practical effects. So again, to, going back to that animatronic half rotted female corpse that they strapped to the table and stuff like that. I love that bit because they're like, right, mm. she looks, she moves pretty well and it all sort of like, you know, she talks and stuff. It looks good. I mean, I love, I prefer practical effects over special, over, over CGI. Yeah, I yeah, think everybody course, does. Course, the, yeah. Your eye just prefers it really, you know, that uncanny valley thing. Mm. But not only does it look good, but that moment when they've got her strapped to the, to the, the gurney uh, in the mortuary, opens up the second element of horror for this film for me because the fact of the matter is these people have been raised from the dead so they were dead okay Mm -hmm. now this chemical has seeped into them through the rain and whatever and has brought them back and has brought them back with a level of consciousness now that level of consciousness has brought back obviously all these physical feelings and that's when they so they now need to eat brains these are the zombies that need to eat brains and when she asks like why brain when they ask her why brains She's, it's basically because they can feel themselves decomposing and it hurts. So the only relief they have is to eat people's brains. Mm. And that's just horrific to me, that is. <laughs> that sounds... That, seriously, like, if you're... You've got no other way out of this, that you are, do, you are dead, it hurts, and you can feel yourself decomposing. Mm. And the only way to do it is to eat... Like, oh, fuck, of course I'm going to do it then if that's what I need to do. Mm. So these are people, again, that you think you have to think about it. If they didn't have that, they probably wouldn't be doing this. They are just driving... To, they are doing it to alleviate a pain. Mm. That's crazy. That that that, that one bit really like, bother, almost bothers me. Really? Yeah, it really gets to me. That this thing of like... Oh, just, okay. That thought of feeling myself decomposing... Yeah, really like freaks me out. That sort of yeah. So that really, you know, you know, you're not. Yeah, you know, you know, you're not decomposing. Oh, I know, I'm not yet. You know, yeah. I'm I'm, uh, I'm not over forty just yet. No. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, but no, I mean that's what yeah. So that's what I really like about this movie. It has got a dark, dark edge. Mm. Um, is it? A, but is it just a glorified homage film? It pays tribute. I don't know. I think it stands alone. I, you you don't have to have seen Night of the Living Dead to re, to appreciate Return of the Living Dead. No, because he tells the entire story of Night of the Living Dead in like a little monologue yeah, right yeah, at the beginning true. in the warehouse. So it's like, all right, well, I don't have to watch that film now. I uh, know what happens there. I know what you mean. Is it too? Is it? Does it? Is it too reliant on the tropes of the genre? Then you, you think about Return uh, Night of the Living Dead, and you think about how that is. That's a siege film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you think of Return of the Living Dead. It's a siege film. Well, so are most zombie films. So Shaun of the Dead, you know, it ends up being a siege film at the end of that because they'll get to the pub and 
so's Day of the Dead, so's you know all those sort of films, Dawn of the Dead. They all become zombie films are pretty much all siege films because that's all the zombies have got is on mass, or mm. you know they're trying to kill you. So yeah, I get what you're saying, but I think that's just a trope of the genre rather than being an homage. But I think I don't know. I I, I think that I understand what you're saying about that, but I mean I think there are you know things that break the rules there of, of that mm. that thing. As there is with any film, but I think I just think that this is too close to Nights of the Living mm-hmm. Dead. Do you know what I mean? It's I can, just I can see, what you're saying. You see the, the the comparison is too close. Yeah, there. even the ending. Yeah, yeah. The ending is is it's the same ending on a larger scale. Yes. Yeah, it is. What can we do with shitloads of extras, low budgets, a lot more? You know, and let's we make this twenty years later. I can't remember where it was twenty years later, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And well, let's let, well let's play back. I mean, this is going to be spoilers. At Night of the Living Dead, in the original Night of the Living Dead, they come mm. out the house. And they come out the house and they see that the army are coming, or there's people with guns. Yeah. And they're like, eh, you know, we're saved. And they get shot. They get shot down. Because mm. they think they're, they think they're, they're the, the survivors are zombies. And then they move on. So what do they do to update it? So you've got the you have the saviors, but actually the army have sort of basically, again, the army, mm. have written that area off and just said, nuke it. Yeah. So they they nuke it, burn it, and then to top it all off, because we know that the apocalypse is still going to ha- happen, that fire sends all that smoke back up into the atmosphere, spreads over a, a wider yeah um a wider area, and it rains again. So it's that like, it's that like ongoing cycle. So again, it's that downbeat ending. So. Again, I can see that the ending of this could be taken as too close of an homage to. And they don't, you know, they don't follow that up in number two, which is quite bizarre. Do they not? No, not really. No, number two is complete. Is a comedy horror film from beginning to end. More of a comedy horror. Yeah, yeah. More yeah. comedy then. Yeah, there's one bit in *It Return of the Living Dead* too where they zombie they got a zombie's a zombie's head's been cut off, mm. and uh, it's still going, you know. So he gets this screwdriver and he shoves it into the zombie's head. And I always remember this line because I always thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a horror movie. Where, whereas the the head's there and he's picked up the head by its head, by his head, mm. you know, and it's the zombie, the female zombie, in a very sort of like Texan accent, goes, "Get this goddamn screwdriver out of my head," you know, <laughs> and it just sets the tone for everything yeah. that's going for. So it's, it's, it's a bit more of a screwball comedy. Yeah, it's 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 very comedy. Right. I think okay. what they did, they looked at. For me, they looked at number one and said, "What worked with that? What didn't work? Mm. You know, fuck it. Let's just make a complete comedy film." Because again, the barometer is shifting more towards comedy. Yeah, more towards humour. And then you got number three, which is just dark and fucked up. Yeah, you know, they come back the other way. I think it's great film. Three. It is. I like three. Three was good. I and they got four and five as well, of course. Never seen them because they look like your bowl kind of. Uh, four and five are let's let, are more are more fan films, mm. to, in my opinion, than part of the franchise. Right. Okay. okay it's like the the, the new one's called Rave for the Grave or something, isn't it? So um, I can't remember. Yeah, they they didn't look good. I've what, got I've got them both. In researching this, I look, I checked them out on IMDb and watched some trailers and stuff, and I was like, I'm not I'm not watching these. They look awful. So mm. I sort of I didn't really delve too much into it. They could be any film. Yeah, that's the thing with them. Okay, so that's Return of the Living Dead. Overall, though, I'd say good experience. So it's a good, enjoyable film. I think it's yeah. I don't think it's a film you could watch more than once. In a lifetime. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't stand out as a film you'd watch multiple times. I've watched it a couple of times. I mean, I quite enjoy it in that sense. I mean, it's not because you've not, had to. Well, yeah, it's, this time I've had to. But it's, it's. I would say it's in heavy rotation. Maybe every couple of years, every three or four years, I think. Yeah, probably, maybe. I'd probably maybe. pop it in for Halloween. You know, yeah. Just if I was on a zombie kick, maybe. <laughs> zombie kick. Yeah. Well. Yeah. No, I mean maybe that that number one, two, and three back to back would be quite interesting. Yeah, I think that'd be a good that'd be a good uh, triple bill. Just yeah. the first three. Mm. Okay, so we'll get to the scores later. All right then. So the second film, the second contender mm-hmm. for this Footmaster Mash then is um, H.P. Lovecraft's Reanimator. Indeed. Now this directed by Stuart Gordon mm-hmm. um, and featuring they, Jeffrey they all, Coombs. Done by Stuart Gordon. All of them? No. Oh, okay. No, just the first one. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe. I'll have to check that. And he definitely did the second one. Um, I'm going to have to check now. You've stopped mm. me. Uh, and, and starring Jeffrey Coombs. Now, 
let's, let's go back to this then. So I always start with that. Because he did From Beyond and he Stuart Gordon as well. I'm sure he did the third one. Um, so let's start with what we usually start with. Okay. Mike, what, we, what are your thoughts and what are your experiences then of uh, Reanimator? I saw this film a long, long, long time ago in a land far, far away. <laughs> and I remember how shocked I was by the content of it because at the time, you know, this this was quite cutting edge, really, some of the stuff they were doing. Because uh, you have lots of full frontal nudity in it. Yeah. Um, a lot of boobage in it. Yeah, the ending contains a lot of boobage. Actually, she's a very talented actress, that, that boob, that woman. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, I, you know, when I was when I was younger. Then I had to go back and rewatch it because you wanted me to. Yeah. Uh, now it already was part of my collection. Yeah. Uh, so because that to me it's always a, it's a classic. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question about this in a minute. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Um, and uh, so re- revisited it. I kind of looked at it and thought, from now, you know, twenty years on, or whatever, mm. really, since I've seen it, what is it I liked about it? in the past and what do I like about it now and I think what I liked about it in the past is very different to what I like about it now yes so now it's it's now it's a different thing I like it because of its because of its um, let's not worry about that attitude to things you know it's like when he's in the when he's in the train his head's in the train you can <laughs> clearly see that his uh, you know the train's moving you can see his shoulder poking through yeah. stuff and you're like oh, no, let's not worry about that yeah. and the um and the, the when his his head is being cut off and the body comes behind and the body is about seven foot because he, he's yeah. wearing, wearing a thing on top and, and the arms ne- the hands. arms the arms never straight no, they never straight because it, it's clear that there's a person behind that doing the arms and at the end when he's they are holding the head down so they're gonna you know that she's gonna lick around yeah and you can clearly see he's there just yeah, yeah, like yeah. but I gotta admit there's some it's, it's brilliant though isn't it uh, it's ropey and brilliant yeah, yeah totally now uh, and cutting edge. I keep saying that cutting edge at the yeah. time when this came out, it was just wow. There's nothing so, quite like this. I'm gonna ask you a question then. Which version did you see? There are three versions of this film. Mm-hmm. So there's the original theatrical release, yeah, uh, which was the R-rated version. Right. There is then the director's cut, which is slightly shorter. Right. So to make it an R cut, they had to cut out some of the violence and add in some padding scenes. Yeah. It's not um, that one or that one. It's the other one. Okay, and then there's a third version, which is what Stuart Gordon returned to it, yeah, and actually made what they call the inter- the integral version. Yeah, I watched that one, and that's a bit longer because that basically has all the violence and all the padded scenes. Yeah, and I would say is actually the best version. Yeah, that's the one I watched. Yeah, yesterday, so that's yeah. one I watched. Yeah, um, and it is. I I really enjoyed this film. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and you're right. It is ropey. There are, I'm totally right. And uh, there are moments in this where, again, it gets really dark, and there are some moments in this that I think are really sort of like quite dramatic. And then there are moments when someone's dancing around with a cat on their face, and it looks awful. Yeah. But I'm like, no, I'm with it. All right. Yeah. This is the, he's got a reanimated but cat on his face. You know what? The acting in this film is far superior to yes. that. Uh, this this is very Hammer House of Horror esque acting going on here yes you know everyone is a character mm-hmm. in this uh, 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 there's some yeah. hammy acting oh of course of course like, but so was hammer hammer was hammy oh, you yes. know all the way you know you you mean you've created a monster yeah. doctor you know that sort of thing and and yeah and it's the same same principle here it was very very hammy yeah um but it was far better acting than, than living dead do right. This is the thing. So we talk. It was very panto. It is very panto. Yeah. yeah. Now I I've done some research on the loves uh, the um, the history of, of the story itself. Hmm. So it's obviously based on H. P. Lovecraft's Herbert West reanimator, hmm. um, which was uh, which is number four. It's going to be coming out soon. Uh, yes, hopefully. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, it was serialised in 19, between 1921 and 1922. So uh, it's got about seven chapters in it, and each chapter's like a little bit of the story. And, you know, regardless of what you think of H.P. Lovecraft and his stories, you know, is he a literary master? Is he Was he a hack? Whatever. 
all this stuff I find really insane. I'm a bit, I am a massive H.P. Lovecraft fan. But this story, you cannot deny that the tone of this film is almost like an updated version of what Lovecraft was going for in the story. Mm. So for all of his sort of like Poe, you know, Edgar Allan Poe um, devotion, all this other stuff, and some of the stuff gets really dark and you've got the Cthulhu mythos and all that other stuff. Herbert Rest Reanim- Reanimator is actually quite pulpy and is actually really funny in places. Mm. So the in, the point in this that Jeffrey Coombs is perfect. He's, he is pitch perfect as Herbert West is in the story. Yeah, And I love the fact it's replayed in the film and it's done in the books. It's done in the story, sorry. When he's ever, whenever his experiments fail, his simple response is, the body wasn't fresh enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, never his fault. It's never his fault. It's no, like, no. Well, next time it'll be better because we're going to fresh a body. Yeah. And I love the fact that he's just obsessed. Yeah, totally agree. And, totally uh, agree. So, yeah, so it has a literary... And I think that's what you've said. That the, I think the story in this is stronger because it has a literary background. The structure and everything's there. And then they took it, modernised it, and made it a pulp film. Mm. And that's why I think it works. Um... But you're right about that. I, I think this whole film rests on Jeffrey Coombs. Yeah. If his performance was was off, I don't think you'd you'd buy the rest of the film. I think I think the rest of the film would start to fall apart because mm. it rests on the fact that he is so dedicated to the, this this science of reanimating a dead you know a corpse. Um, and he he just, just his conviction. Like, he doesn't see this as a Hammer horror film. No. He, you know what I mean? Like he plays it dead straight, mm. and everybody around him is sort of like swirling around the madness that is this sort of like this obsession. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, he's not even the vi- and considering what he does in this film, he's not even the villain. No, he's not. No, 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 no. The villain is played by an English gentleman, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, David British. Gale. Yeah, just sadly no longer with us though. No. He died very young, didn't he? he heart, put... heart complications? Uh, I think so, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he plays Dr. Carl Hill, who has some really inappropriate feelings towards um, one of the main characters' girlfriends. Yeah. Like, really yeah, creepy. Yeah, yeah, like creepy dad. Yeah, creepy he's your... Dad. Cre- well, he is, he's that creepy uncle. He's not really your uncle. Who co- Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who yeah. comes around and looks after the kids. Uh, but that's what he is, isn't he? Yeah, and yeah. Sort of, and, um, We've yeah. all got one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So what, we asked the questions before then about mm. the same thing. All right. So what is it you like about this film, first off? I like the fact, first of, again, I keep going back to the same saying about it being cutting edge. I like the fact that it it dared to do things that other films hadn't done. Mm. I like the fact that, it, you know, it had full frontal nudity, nudity and reanimation of corpses, you know. It, and the only other reanimation of corpses films, apart from the zombie films, of course, is stuff like Frankenstein, which, in, in the great scheme of things, apart from Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, is pretty tame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it... It is it is very dark and and very macabre the the entire tale is the entire story. I love the character portrayals. I think that the you know the the evil doctor and you know that's 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 there's a, a suggestion that he stole ideas of another doctor. That's why he's so successful. Yes, yeah. I love you know and I love all that. I love the fact that there's you know this squeaky clean doctor that gets corrupted by. Another doctor is a bit mad and a little bit odd, you know. And I love the fact that it ruins know. him, doesn't it? And yeah. That's the point, Dan. Yeah, the guy. He's he's, he's up and up. He's he's a, he's going to be a surgeon. Yeah, and yeah. It literally, looks like he gets pulled into um, Ward. Ward is his name? Ward, the other one. Dan. He gets pulled in. Uh, is that yeah? His name is Dan Kane is the character name. Yeah, and he gets pulled into the orbit of Herbert West. Herbert and West, it, and yeah, it just starts right. to fall apart. Mm. Like it's it's. Yeah, like Herbert. What Herbert West is so sort of like doesn't give a shit. You know, well, no, his obsession is all he cares about. Yeah, 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 all he cares about, and it's just done so well. And yeah. it, it, just the whole chemistry of everyone working together worked really well. Even uh, the even her mad father. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's oh. you're never you're never having a cock as long as I'm alive. That yeah, kind of, he was that kind her, of her. Her overacting at one point, to one or two points, does get on my nerves. The, the girlfriend at one point she gets a bit too screechy and I was a bit like oh, if he'd have just done yeah. that down a little bit it'd be better okay um, but other than that I think you're right the chemistry oh, she's quite hot as well she's very attractive yeah, she's very, she's very attractive but you get you know, the humour in this so that's, the, that's mm. the, there's, there's some great humour in this as well so is this but I don't think 
I don't think that it was meant to be humorous. I oh, it is. Think. No, it is. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah. So again, I listened to an interview with Stuart Gordon, mm. um, the the director and writer, and that, and he was he was going for pulp humor. Like he's always, it's not meant to be laugh out loud oh, that funny. Makes, yeah, that makes sense. Then pulp humor. All right. Yeah, I get so, that. So, for example, the moment when he's obviously beheaded, um, the evil doctor. You bastard! That one. Yeah, and he sort of he, he takes his head off with a spade, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's trying to put it in that tray, and it keeps falling over. And then he sees the letter spike. Yeah, yeah. And, he goes, <laughs> and he's oh, like, oh. So he, and he puts it on that. Yeah. That's a, that's dark and humorous. That that makes me. Oh, chuckle. and then when the the the, the when he, the doctor's back in his office and the and the, the body's looking for something and he's not yeah, looking yeah. over the doctor goes. Oh, yeah. 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 For example, it's silly, but it's pulpy. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, the fact that when he is beheaded and he's got her trapped, he takes his own head off and he's basically placing his own head between her legs. Yeah. yeah to yeah. eat her out. Yeah, yeah. And like he's. It, it's messed up, but it's silly. Yeah, to be honest, you so would I. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah so would I. Um, and then when he does finally beat him, because he's reanimated the body independently of the head, all the organs come out to attack him. Like the intestines come out and attack him. And all yeah, sort of yeah. Stuff. So it is silly in places, but it plays well. Yeah, uh, it, I think it plays really well. And again, the special effects are pretty good. Yeah. In no 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 in in, a, in that pulpy way. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of blood. They're like, just blood everywhere. Throw it around. Oh, there's lots of blood. I don't think there was much special effects. See, the problem I got with this film mm. is the fact of, like... Well, it's not really a problem at all. It's just the fact that when it comes to special effects, I kind of think that there, there really wasn't that many special effects. You know, I mean, that's you, you put in someone's head in a tray. You just you put a head. Yeah, that's still a special tra- effect. It's still it's still going to be done. It's a practical effect. So oh, I don't know. Happen. I think the special effects in this one. Was, I think the special effects in this one were quite ropey in the greatest. In of in some, I would know. I'm not disagreeing. Because what you do is you get an actor, uh, strip him naked, fill his mouth full of blood. Yeah. You know, squatter his over his face, and then just have him attack people. That's not. That's just dressing. Oh, I right. think it's, okay, I think it's just okay. dressing. Okay. I see what you're saying. I so enjoyed some of that pulpy. I'm with the cat. Yeah, the cat's hilarious. <laughs> the cat is just not a special effect. No, at no, all. no. It, just... It's it's a it's a it's a, a plushy covered in blood. And then the the, the invisible cat then, which I love the invisible yeah. cat routine. It's great. There. <laughs> bum, bum, yeah, bum, yeah, bum, yeah. Bum. <laughs> yeah. You're just hitting a tin can, dude. Yeah. That's all you're doing. Um, I, I see what you're saying, and I can yeah. agree for the. Are oh, you agree? I'm not going to disagree. Yeah, it's dressing. It's, it's not dressing. special. Okay, that's what you're saying. The dressing. Um. And it's, but so, all right, so some of the makeup effects are quite interesting, I would say. So yeah. when the zombies come out, and one, one guy's got half his face missing, and the other one's got like, all burnt up, and that sort of thing, like, they look quite good for what they are for the eighties, yeah, for, the for 80s, low budget, yeah. for yeah, low they, budget they, they, practical they, effects, putty, putty induced, yeah, yeah, putty induced, latex induced um, effects, which work well. But then we go. So let's go to the scares. Then, so what, you know, we said about the. So we've gone to the comedy, comedy now. What about the horror of this? What? Oh, yeah, horror? I think it is. I think it's quite disturbing in places. I think, to be honest with you, I think that's the horror. Is this mm. guy? Somebody just go, oh no, it's a bit nasty. That's uh, a bit nasty, you know, and, and stuff like that. I think it's it's there is that that underlined kind of like scariness to it. I think mm. uh, as a film, I mean, it does scream Lovecraft. I mean, to me, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, you, some people might not know Lovecraft's work, but I mean, it's it's very Lovecraft. Oh, you know, yes, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah, and it's very dark. And yeah, and there are, of course it is. Yeah, the entire the entire reanimation of corpses that come back to life that are just mental. It's just scary shit. Well, they just weren't fresh enough. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's and that's, true. I love, I love that. There is one moment, again, much like in the last one, that horror of, um, you know, the realisation that being dead, or being a reanimated corpse and you can feel yourself decomposing in, in Return of the Living Dead. Hmm. That moment, I find, is the key moment of the film. But there's a moment in this... Which I'm never entirely sure how to take, but um, is again that pivotal moment about the obsession. So I think the whole film, the horror of this is is his obsession mm. and how he basically ruins other people and that sort of thing on on his quest. But there's a moment where the evil doctor comes into his laboratory and he sees all of his kit all about him and he keeps and he's setting. He basically says to Herbert West, he sort of stares at him and they do like a Bella Lugosi eye moment where he looks at him and he's like. And, you know, you are going to hand this over to me and you will be my assistant. And he sort of gives in. Mm. And I don't know whether he's hypnotised him. Too quick. Well, no, it's the moment, though, because it goes back and it's almost like Herbert West can't stop him and a tear rolls down his cheek. And he's like, I'm losing 
everything. And like, I almost feel, you do feel sorry for him. Mm. I just don't understand, is he being hypnotised? That but that moment where he's, you can see that like this is his life's work, this is all he cares about, mm. is being taken away from him. And it's heartbreaking in a really sight. You're thinking, yeah, but you're killing people. <laughs> yeah. But I can see that it's heartbreaking for him. And I actually get really taken in by that. Do you know what I think is that from a, from a director's perspective and from a you know an actor's perspective as well because mm. I've been on both sides mm. of it you know and uh, is that if you went to a casting call of this an audition for this and you auditioned to be the security guard yes right <laughs> now this is an interesting role so you know you're there and you go, right we got a we got a we got a great job for you it's the security <laughs> guard okay it's it's a black man. So you have to be black to play this, because obviously, you know, all security guards are black in American, mm. in American 80s films. And also as well, your character disappears to go to the bathroom with a porn mag to have a wank. Routinely. Routinely, yeah. This is your daily what, routine. Yeah, and, and he, I love the way he, he, like, he hits it in his mag and he's like, great time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, wow. He's the and worst security guard. And then you've got, you've got a really tall, prosthetic-based <laughs> doctor. Right. Go. Here's the thing. It was about seven foot tall. Here's the thing. Yeah. That, you know, he has his head in a bag, and yeah. the voice comes from the bag. Yeah. And that's what sort of like he goes, it looks good. That is straight from the story, from the from the Lovecraft written story. So in the story, they reanimate it. I bet it looked more, more, more in my imagination better in that it story does. Than, it, 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 the, than it does in, in reality. The, in the book, in the, in the novella, they describe it as a waxen. A beautifully sculpted waxen head, that that but yeah. and, also this, and you do think like you know it's it's really well well written in the book, um, but yeah I, I do like the fact though that that's what, instead of putting his own head on and just holding it in place yeah. and going in, which could easily be done, he he places a surgical dummy's head that's half a, like half face half skull yeah 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 on top. Brilliant. And he walks in backwards. He walks in. <laughs> you can only see one half. It is really well done. The security guy goes, yeah, all right laugh. then. All right then. That bit makes me laugh. But hmm. like, that bit makes me laugh. Um, and there's little bits like that that I think are like, they're just silly, but it's played up perfect. Panto. Like you said before, it's played like Panto. Yeah. Yeah. There is that silliness to it, most definitely. And I think that, yeah, that security guard's. You know, it's not something that you put on your resume and just go, you know what? I was this, this. I was paid to do this. This masturbating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Inept security guard. Inept security guard. Um, wow. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, I think, I think it's, a, it's a good film. I really enjoyed it. And it was. I'm, I'm, I think great ending. And that's what I was going to say. The ending, again, is quite a down. Mm. It goes mental, doesn't it? I mean, the, the, you know. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. The shit hits a fan, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. there is. I don't understand this whole... It was a very James Bond ending, though, isn't it? We're going to take the girl, and we're going to take her, and we're going to do these things, I'd but never... we're not going to kill her. I never understand what his end game is. Is he going to kill her and reanimate her? Is he going to do these things? I well, don't he's, know. he's building himself a reanimation army, isn't he? That's what he's yeah, trying to do. Yeah, because all the other ones jump up. And they all listen to him. Why? Well, there's two things that confuse me. So, yeah, what he reanimates all these bodies, and they're like his army. Now, again, that happens in the book, but there's an explanation as to why that happens in the book, mm. not covered in the film. But the other thing is, he's done it in the bo- in the basement mortuary of a busy hospital. How are they planning to leave? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe they're not, though. Maybe they, that's the, the idea, is to get them from the basement, kill people along the way, and reanimate the bodies and make and them just, part of the army. just populate from there. Yeah. Um, but why has he got so much anger issues? Why is he taking world domination with zombies? You I, know, I think well? he just wants to... I don't know. It is the ending slot sort of goes off kilter a little bit. It goes, but what a fucking role to play though. Think oh, about that because I mean fun. the doctor gets to suck her tit. Yeah, I mean he he licks and sucks it properly on camera. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's not how many takes. Brilliant. Didn't quite get that one. Yeah, <laughs> Try I again. just need I just need five minutes of my trailer. If that's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go be a security guard for a couple of minutes. Yeah. He's very good at limping, that man. Very yeah. good. Um. But again, as with Return of the Living Dead, this has quite a downbeat ending. Like you assume Herbert West is killed, yeah, because they leave him behind. Yeah, yeah. They escape up into the uh, into the lift and they get upstairs, and, and, and the girlfriend is injured and dies on mm. on the, the with the boobs bed. out. Yeah, yeah, dies on the hospital bed, um, leaving Dan Kane behind. So his life is now in tatters, mm. but he's left with one jar. Of the reanimating fluid left, mm. 
and again, it's just left with him injecting that into her. But if you and look at the, the last, end. look at the last scene though. He's injecting it into the table. Is he? I have to go back and set. Watch yeah, that. yeah, you're gonna have to watch that last okay. bit, right? Because it's clear that he's yeah. injecting into the table. Now you notice that up to this point, all the reanimated corpses always injected behind the head. Yeah, into the brain. He, he does. He... he doesn't do that. Uh-huh. He injects it into the table. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just like, what are you doing? You know, you lift in the head. I'll have to watch that back. But um, great ending, it, it sort of insinuates that he brings her back using that. Um, and like I say, I haven't seen hence, the sequence. Hence, Bride of the Reanimator. Exactly. So it? I will have to watch that. I really want to watch it. And, and, and also, it. the Doctor is in as well. The Doctor's in the Bride of the Reanimator. Is he? So he yeah. survived. So. Well, yeah, but his head got squashed into a... Oh, yeah, because Dr. Halsey, her dad, who's also yeah. been reanimated, crushes it, doesn't he? Yeah, and then he gets ripped apart into pieces. Yeah, he sacrifices himself because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's that little glimmer of consciousness in there. Yeah. So, okay. we've now discussed them. Right. Um... I thought this was a good choice. Now, before we get into our, should we do should we do the Twitter poll before or after we've done our scores? You can do it now, I suppose. So I felt this was quite a difficult one for me. Okay. I ummed and ahmed. I went back and forth because I I do enjoy them both. Um, so the Twitter poll we had over a hundred over a hundred votes votes again. So I think it's a pretty solid answer. Seventy five percent chose a winner. Can you guess which one won? Reanimator. Return of the Living Dead. No way. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead. How many people have seen Reanimator? Well, I that's guess. it. I think Reanimator is way more of a cult film. Mm. And people talk about Return of the Living Dead being a, a cult film, but I think it's more mainstream. I yeah, think it's, it's, it's much more mainstream. It's had, it's had multiple releases. You know, it, it's clearly, you know, I think much more of a. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's on Netflix as well. Yeah, yeah so, which. If you're on Netflix, you've sold out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're on Netflix, you're you kind of like, you know, you've got a mass market there yeah. for new generations so of people. Um, people haven't seen Reanimator. And I think they should. Oh, totally. Really totally. think they should. Anyone who's looking for that cult 80s horror feel, that, that vibe, yeah. should be watching this film. So let's start with our scores then. I'll okay, my, cool. I'll get my pen so I can do my math. So uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with the order we did then. Return of the Living Dead. So we're going to stick with the... Um, stick with the... Same format. S- same format as last time. Special so effects, some, yeah, scare, so special... story, performances, overall, and then the total. Yeah. And okay. you've got on here anal. Yeah, that's a different score. Okay. <laughs> so, special effects for Return of the Living Dead. I've got eight. Eight. I'll give eight as well, actually. Okay. So I think it's pretty good special effects, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, scares. Seven. I'll give it an eight. Okay. Just because of the, the little amputee and... Uh, some of the bits. Okay. Story. Six. So I give it a seven, but again, only because of that decomposing thing, I think adds to the story. I think okay. the backstory, like you say, is a complete homage, but whatever. Performances. Uh, well, I've given it a six, because I think it's it's entertaining, but it's pretty shit at the same time. I gave them a five, because right. I really struggle. There are two scenes, like we said before, it's, it's, it's her giving that thing of like, have you ever thought about a way of dying? Um, really irritates me. I can't think of anything else except for your boobs at this yeah. present moment in time, love. And there's another one where the girlfriend, the non-punk punk, <laughs> says to one of the guys, okay, well, I'm going to go find Jeff. I think it was Jeffrey. I'm going to go find Jeffrey. And he's like, all right. And she's like, um, don't, don't go anywhere without us. And it feels like such high school level acting that I, it just, yeah, yeah, or yeah. irritates me. So five. Okay. She was cheap, probably. Yeah. So overall. Seven. Okay, I gave it an eight. Okay, so we're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Pretty close. So I gave that's 36. And for me. mine's 34 for me. 34, so that's 70. Okay, that's a good score. Yeah, well, that's not a bad score. So, Reanimator. Okay. Special effects. Seven. I'll get a seven too. Okay. Yeah, so we were on par. Scares. Six. Six. I gave it a seven. Okay. Okay. Story. Eight. I gave it an eight as well. I think it's a much stronger yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Performances. Seven. I give it seven as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think it's much better performances. And then overall. I got eight. I got an eight as well. So oh, what was wow. yours then? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. So let me just do uh, my maths here live on a podcast. I'm doing maths. You may want to go listen to something else for an hour while so, I add these two numbers together. Seventy-three. Yeah. So the Twitter sphere. Mm. That seventy-five percent chose yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. You and I. It's quite close. It's still very, very mm. close. Mm. Seventy-three out of a hundred for Reanimator. 
and 70 for Return of the Living Dead. So Reanimator wins... By three points. By three points. That's not bad, though. That's a pretty handy yeah. win. It'd be interesting as well to see someone like Reanimator from beyond. Do the third... Yeah. If you were to compare the first, right, so if you were to do the franchise, let's forget I said the, the crappy two. If you were to do yeah. Return, Return of the Living Dead one, two, and three versus the you know Reanimator one, two, and three, which one do you think, as a as a franchise, as a trilogy, which one do you think holds up better then? Gosh, um, oh, it's difficult, isn't it? I'd like to say Reanimator. Do they need? Do they deserve returning to? Yeah. I, I remember Beyond Reanimator is is, years, so. is set in a prison and gets really mental at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, has yeah. a has a it actually has like a reanimated. Yeah, Herbert West goes to prison. Yeah, yeah, because he's goes to prison after number two, yeah. I believe. It's a really weird prison, and it actually it features a reanimated penis, uh, yes. uh, chasing people down. Yes, gosh. So it goes a bit nuts. Yeah, I remember this. I know that Night of the Living Dead, uh, Return of the Living Dead 3 is pretty cool. I know yeah. it's very underrated, but I think it was flipping cool. Mm. Really good film. So, yeah, I don't know. I think Reanimator probably wins on the edge there because they, they reinvent themselves, whereas yeah. Return of the Living Dead doesn't. No. It's the same thing. Yeah, you know? again and again. And I find that with some if, you, if you're going for a straight genre uh, zombie film, mm. like you say, those genre tropes... You've either got to break out of them or you're going to be pulled down by them, I think, at this point. Because the other one is called um, Herbert West's. No, Herbert... It's it's Reanimator. Mm. Uh, or H.P. Lovecraft's hit Reanimator. Bride yeah. of Reanimator. Right, right. Beyond Reanimator. And Beyond Reanimator. And what's the new one? The new one's called... It, I think it's just going to be called Herbert West Reanimator. Herbert but West I, Reanimator. I, I, but I think it's a reboot, isn't it? I have no idea. I have no idea. Mm. I've heard of it. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I don't, I don't even know if Jeffrey Coombs is in it, actually. I should have a look. No, it's not. He's not. Oh, it is someone else. Yeah. yeah I don't care then. Um, so yeah so that's been quite good fun actually yeah, I think, I think the right. monster mashes have been this versus battle thing I think I yeah. quite like the debate it's been too yeah uh, I've, I've, you know I, out of this I've decided probably never going to watch The Howling again yeah that's pretty but, much but I will definitely go back and see American Wife in London again yeah I watched it yesterday with my six and eight year old yeah because you wouldn't raise them right terrified that's it you wouldn't <laughs> raise them right in this world um and out of these two, I've looked, actually, I quite enjoy both of these, but I actually ended up purchasing um, uh, Reanimator. Yeah, so, no, that's that, so it's a good... Yeah, worth good, it. Yeah, definitely worth it. Arrow release of... Um, Arrow release of uh, Reanimator... Uh, Bride of Reanimator, but mm. Beyond Reanimator isn't out on general release it's yet? It's not. On Blu-ray, no. No, it's not. You, have to, you can't track it down on Blu-ray. It's weird. DVD, you can get it on there. Yes. You know? I probably will, actually. But. I got the second sight versions of both Re- uh, Return of the Living Dead and... Reanimator, both good versions, good, yeah, some good yeah. uh, special features, yeah, all that kind of thing. So track them down. I'm really going to say like the werewolf ones. Everyone's seen American One from London, and I'm not going to say don't watch it. It's an amazing film. I'll watch it totally. Yeah. Um, but I think these two, these need to be rediscovered. I need to, if you haven't seen them, look at them. Check them out. Check them out. Like you say, watch them t- on Cody if you have to. I mean, gosh, yeah. Well, Return know? of the Living Dead is on Netflix. Netflix, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can find it. Uh, Reanimator, this this second sighted. Reanimator, I got for like eight quid. Yeah, yeah. On eBay, um, so I think you, you got the same Richard. ones I got actually. Yeah, I think. Um, and it's a lovely edition. It's a dual, um, dual cover. Yeah, same one. Dual cover, uh, multiple versions. So it's it's a great, great film. Reanimator is. Um, so mm. that was our that's our versus battles. Uh, so Mike, this is coming out. Uh, this will be end of September. This will come out, so hopefully mm. you'll be back in the uh, the pod sphere. You'll be you'll be back on the uh, digital airwaves with yeah, well, uh, this first no this Thursday actually. Yeah, this Thursday. So uh, Man of Letters is back. Season two. Season two. Man of Letters. So check that out. It's on iTunes. It's yep. on all the other little all the doodads. All the bodies out there. All those poddy yeah. platforms. Pirate Bay. Gr- that's right, yeah. Grinder. Yeah, that's it. Tinder. Yeah. Um, so check it out and. Uh, Come check out 20th Century Geek. Check out the blog. Uh, this month I did a werewolf blog on the history of werewolves. Mm. I've just released one on the history of, of zombies. Um, find me on Twitter, at 20th Century Geek. Email me, uh, 20th Century Geek at gmail.com. And then all the Facebook and Instagram and find us on there. Um, next month, it's Halloween. It is. It's October. Mm-hmm. It's... Uh, 
time for some pumpkins and some ghosts and ghouls and trick-or-treating. Right. And uh, I'm going to be doing something I'm really, really chuffed about. Anal? Uh, no, I've achieved that many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm going to be looking at something. I'm celebrating something that's 25 years old this year. Me? Uh, Yes, you actually. Yeah, woohoo! Um, no, we're gonna go. I'm going back, and I'm going to be doing a, a ghost watch celebration. Cool. So in 1992, the BBC uh, aired a uh, mockumentary, uh, yeah. faux documentary, whatever you want to call it, called Ghost Watch, which scared the shit out of a nation mm. and was banned for ten years. So cool. I will be speaking to Stephen Volk, the writer and creator of Ghost Watch, mm. about both the creation. <clears throat> Uh, and the legacy of that, and uh, I'm, it's really good. I'm really pleased with it. Sweet, that sounds good. Yeah. So, thank you very much, Mike. No worries. Uh, we'll be back in the Battle Dome in a couple of months, and uh, thank you, listeners. We'll catch up again soon. <laughs>